fiction, science fiction, horror, fantasy, crime, LGBT, thriller. You have now entered the house of mystery with your hosts, Eric Shapiro, David North Martino. John Copenhaver and Al Warren. Heard on KCP 106.5 FM Los Angeles. 102.3 FM Riverside. And 105.0 AM Palm Springs. Now we're lucky enough to have the one and only, um, like nobody else. Um, it's the only, it's... Uh, we we have never had a better guest, and we want to thank uh, Robert Kennedy for being back. Oh no, it's, it's, <laughs> oh Jackie Rob, Bruce. it's Rob Gutro. Hey Rob. <laughs> Hello, Alan and Julie. <laughs> we get the first name right. Yeah. No, this is uh, it's, it's it's a pleasure um, to have you on. This is uh, we think we've had you on three or four times. This is our first back from. Uh, uh, holiday, and we are now on at 9 p.m. in L.A. and Palm Springs. How do you like that? Well, that's awesome. Prime yeah. time. Prime time, almost. And uh, so now you've got a new book that just came out uh, in July, July 18th, called Kindred Spirits, and it's how yes. a spirit befriended a medium. Wow. Yes. Um, so, so give us a little rundown. Um, how did you, what drove you, drove you to write this book? Well, um, over the last 14 years, uh, this one particular spirit continued to come to me. And he, I've gotten to know him very, very well, as a matter of fact. Um, I, I've gotten to know his per quirky personality, his kind of dry sense of humor. And, um, and he, he's told me a lot of intensely personal things about himself. Um, plus, there's a personal connection. Even though I never met him in life, he died in 1996, um, and I never knew him. He was the uh, he was the partner to my husband. So he was the partner to your husband. Yes. So he's a late partner of my husband, and he was they were partners back in the 90s. And uh, his name is Ed, and Ed passed in 1996. Um, so ever since I've met my husband, um, Ed has been around in spirit since 2005. <laughs> so I always joke that there's three people in this relationship. You don't do things by halves, Rob, do you? Okay, so this is fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> so um, why why now? Because this is this is quite a story, isn't it? So why does this come behind the the, the two books about um, communicating with our animals and then about your journeys and how you and, and your husband um, experienced different things in the UK. And you, you waited then right up until now for this? Well, um, this is actually a kind of a compilation. So this is my sixth book. So the, the first one was about it was Ghosts and Spirits. The, the second one was yeah. Lessons Learned from Talking to the Dead. And then yeah. the other three that you mentioned. So in all of those books, Ed had a story. So what I did is I compiled those stories plus all of the new experiences um, that I've had with Ed. And, you know, I... And I actually have conversations with Ed, and I can hear him. So um, I thought it would be—I thought it would be a great thing to do to let people know um, that the, their loved ones in spirit really are around us, um, even though their physical bodies are gone. Um, they can still suggest things to you. They can still interact with you. They can still let you know that they're around by uh, showing you many many different signs and, and symbols and so forth. So take us back to the beginning, Rob. So you've, um, you're, you're already an established medium and you meet your, your husband, your current husband. Yes. Uh, what, what I only had you... one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Apologies. So at that point, when, when, you've, when you've met him, 
how did you what happened next to make you suddenly start to think something uh, there's something to miss here there's something that's that's different um was it gradual was it straight in there with um you know with that understanding and knowledge or it, it was it was a gradual it was a gradual build up it was really like getting to know somebody um in the physical and um you know over time you get to know their their personality traits and and quirky things that they say that nobody else says um and that's what ed was doing with me so one of the first instances instances that i remember was um it, that uh, we were driving back from tom's grandmother's uh cemetery and i looked in the mirror i heard somebody say my name and i looked in the mirror and there was ed looking right at me and i almost slammed the brakes on <laughs> it was very startling because i don't usually see spirit yeah. um, um up close or in you know in color but i saw him so um i, I pulled over and and i and you know of course i get questioned what am i doing there's you know there's nobody behind me there's nobody in front of me why am i pulling over and <laughs> to explain that ed is in the ed is in the truck um so that was that was one of the first instances and then over time he kept giving me little bits of information that um that let me know things that that he was around so uh, there was another instance for for example where we had, were walking out of a Barnes and Noble and Tom was Tom is my husband's name and Tom was saying something kind of goofy um kind of being a little mean spirited and i looked at him and i said you mot and and he looked at me and he said wait a minute what does that mean and i said it means mean old thing and he said i've never heard you say that and i said i never have said that and he said well why did you, why did you call me that i said because uh ed told me to call you that and he said ed used to call me that all the time an mot so um so that was another little insight uh for me to know that Ed was walking, you know, right with us wherever we went. Talk me through the um the first conversation you had with with Tom where you were able to say um I I think I'm communicating with with your ex. What did that conversation look like? <laughs> well, I have to go back a bit because when Tom met me, um Back in December 2005, um, you know, I, I let him know that my dog Buzz had come through many times before. Buzz yes. passed. Buzz passed uh, before I met Tom. Buzz passed in February 2005. So over the course of those ten months, Buzz was very active. So I was explaining that to Tom. You know, I, I believe in being very open and honest in any relationship and you know if some if it freaks somebody out then they're not the right one for you <laughs> whether it be a friend or a, a significant other um so i told him about that and then um you, you know he he was very skeptical so then i started going into historic mansions and and trying to see if anybody was present and and i would get names and i would get information about specific people and then and and, and he, at first julie he used to roll his eyes and say you know whatever go <laughs> go talk yeah. to the historian of the house and and you come back to me and and every time i would talk to the person the historian I, i've had i've had similar conversations i know how that goes so so it, it's always kind of awkward right yeah because there's um I think one of the things my husband said is I I don't believe in ghosts. I said well how what 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 do you think about what I do then? Do you think I'm making it up? Oh I didn't say that he said. Well if you don't believe in ghosts and I can't be and I'm not talking to somebody who has passed over then what am I doing? I don't know. <laughs> it was an awkward thing. Of, Actually I've got no idea and I don't want to call you a liar but <laughs> but I also don't believe in it. So very very awkward. So it was it was pretty much the same thing with me too. And um I think what made it easier though is that um when we met I you know I I used to like watching those ghost hunting programs on TV and 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 Tom would sit and he would watch them with me and and 
he found them pretty interesting. And he said, so, you know, if you really can communicate with people on the other side, I think that's pretty fascinating. Um, and um, if, if you fast forward to 2012, um, Tom, had, Tom didn't have the ability um, when we met. But in 2012, when we went to England and we went to Westminster Abbey, his, he has an ability, and it, it opened up like doors flinging open. Oh, um, I remember you talking about this. This is great. Yeah, so he, so he started to sense Ed <laughs> so, after 2012. So, you know, he, he had no reason to doubt me. So a, couple, a few years, a bit tentative. And then the experience in Westminster Abbey, which really opened up his eyes. Mm-hmm. And and showed his psychic ability, and then he began to sense Ed too. How did that make you feel? Oh, of course. Well, it, it made me feel much better because you know I, I knew that he knew that I wasn't crazy, and I, I knew that he knew that I wasn't making things up. Um, but it was actually a year before that um, that was really pivotal in convincing him that Ed was communicating with me. In fact, um, Ed's communications in, t- in 2011 were, uh, were really amazing because they actually helped convince his dad that he was very much around. So, okay. so in, it, as I said, I never, I never knew Ed. I never knew his family or anything. So in 2011, um, Tom and I decided we were going to go meet meet Ed's dad, who lives in central Virginia, which is about a four-hour drive from here. And uh, and I was going to share with his dad, you know, some of the signs and things that Ed gave me um, from 2005 to 2011, and there were quite a few. So Ed had other plans before, about two weeks before we were going to see uh, his dad. Ed decided that he was going to barrage me with with strange little messages as puzzle pieces for me to put together that helped prove that he was with every member of his family in the two weeks before we visited. Um, and it started when we were – Tom and I were out riding, riding around doing errands, and um, I was – nudged to go to a bookstore. It was a Borders Books chain here that wound up closing in 2011. And he said, why do you want to go in the bookstore? And I said, well, you know, it's closing. They're having a a sale. And he said, but you don't need any more books. But (laughs) I said, I really, I just need to go in there. So, so he said, okay. So, well, he didn't, he didn't want to go in, so he sat in the car. Well, unfortunately for him, he sat in the car for about, I don't know, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but I walked through that whole store, and there was only one. So I, I decided after walking through the store that um, there was one area that I was kind of drawn to, and it wound up being the New Age area. And I looked it, it, it through the shelves, and there was just one book I never heard of, and I picked it out, and I thought, mm, that looks interesting. I just I have to buy this book, and I really didn't want to because the line was very long, you know. But I did anyway. Um, as it turns out, uh, that book was blue in color, and and I had not thought of any connection. But three days before I went to Borders, Ed kept telling me that the to ask his dad about the blue book. Now, I wasn't, again, I wasn't even thinking of this when I went into Borders. It turns out that that blue book was the exact same book that Ed's father's cousin sent him when Ed died. It was called Hello from Heaven, 3,000 Messages from the Other Side. Wow. Um, And... The way that we found out about it was after we visited Ed's dad. He still we still couldn't figure out what the blue book was. <clears throat> Ed's dad sent a, pic, uh, uh, a a letter, and in the in the envelope he sent a picture of the book. And as Tom was reading the letter, he said the letter said something like, I, "I've been thinking about 
the blue book, and I've enclosed a picture of what I think Ed may be suggesting or hinting at. So we were sitting at the table. I ran upstairs and I grabbed the book and I ran downstairs and put the book down on the table at the same time Tom took the picture out and put it on the table. And it was just chilling. Wow. That's that. really powerful. I mean, I, out of the millions of books in this world, Ed led me to that book mm. to prove, help prove that he was around. Wow. And how, how did his dad respond to that when you were able to confirm it? Uh, his, <laughs> his dad was elated. Um, the, the other interesting thing that happened um, – well, so there are a lot of signs and, and, and pictures that I talk about in the book that Ed gave me that were totally disconnected. They were, there was um, a rowboat that was also a kayak. There was an old soda fountain. There was, um, there was a, a duke or a duchess. Um, and, and then he, there, he showed me Heath Ledger. And I thought, okay. Now, Heath Ledger, do you, do you know who Heath Ledger is? Yes, yeah. Okay. So he was the actor that played, he played in a number of things, but he was an Australian actor, for those who are listening, um, who played the Joker in uh, one of the latest Batman movies. And yeah. um, he, um, he tragically passed away um, of an overdose or a mix of medication. Mm -hmm. So I presented the image of Heath Ledger to his dad and I said, Ed is telling me that he died accidentally of a mixture of prescription medications. And his dad is a retired pharmacist. Wow. And he sat there for a minute and he thought about what Ed was taking at the time. You know, 15 years before. Yes. yes. And he realized that those two medications today, they know now that you cannot mix them and they will kill you. So Ed solved the mystery of his suicide by letting his dad know that it wasn't a suicide. It was an accidental mix of prescription medications. That must have been incredibly healing for his dad. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Everybody cried. Um, you know, mm -hmm. we <laughs> there's a lot of hugs. Um, his dad, his dad told me something I will never forget as long as I live. And uh, one of the most wonderful things I've heard, you know, being getting these messages. He said, "For the first time in 15 years, I can finally stop grieving over the loss of my son." Just not knowing if somebody's taken their life, having to live with the not knowing. You know, why and having, did I miss something? Is there more I could have done? To know then it's, it's an accidental death. You yes. You can't even imagine the impact, can you? It be huge. No, it, it is, uh, yes, yeah, so the grief was overwhelming. And, mm. and it, it, he said it weighed on him for all of that time. Um, and, um, and the other things, you know, as, as we went through, some of the other things um, that the other messages or signs and symbols that he gave us. Um, and I, I realized that Ed liked to make things a game. He liked to joke around and, and make things a game. He had kind of a dry sense of humor. Um, yeah. So that's why he didn't tell me exactly what everything meant. He, he said, you know, you can figure it out. Um, so, you know, he's, he told me um, the, the word jingle was especially important and he said this is a very personal thing and I thought I, you know I just thought I think it was March when <laughs> we were going to see his dad and I thought okay Christmas is, is three months past and a long way away and so what in the world how could Jingle be personal how, mm. that, that doesn't make any sense um, well we found out when we went to his dad's house because as soon as I told his dad that his dad got up and he went in the other room and he said, in this room is all of the personal things, Ed's personal belongings that I still have. Um, and he reached, into a, um, he reached into a bookshelf and he pulled out a can and the can said, Jingle Java. It was a can 
that uh, his coworkers had made him with the words Jingle Java on it because Ed used to put coins in a can all the time to buy coffee. He was a big coffee drinker like me. Right. So, so you know, there was there's no way that I could know that. And he and he said, how could you possibly know that the word Jingle had a personal connection to Ed? Well, because he told me. <laughs> So is there, uh, were there any signs or words that you picked up on that uh, you just cannot make sense of yet? No, fortunately, absolutely no. <laughs> we, we were able to solve all of the, all of the, uh, the signs and the, and that Ed has, has given us, um, which is just amazing to me. Um, uh, from, from Duke and Duchess, which took a little doing, um, to the rowboat kayak. Uh, it turns out his brother had bought a brand new boat two weeks before when we came down. And um, in the book, I explain how exactly his brother described it the first time and how he described it the second time. And he used rowboat the first time and kayak the second time. And when he did that, um, Ed's dad was standing at um, the bottom of the front stairs of their house. And he, I, I remember the look on his face as mulch just dropped. And he, and he said, we have to go. We we have to go. So we got in the car, and Ed's dad said, did you hear that he said that his boat is both a rowboat and a kayak? Mm-hmm. And I said, yes. And he said, I am too freaked out right now. <laughs> <laughs> so... Thank- uh, you, you've been on this incredible journey, Rob, where you have, um, you know, even I think it's in one of your, maybe the third or fourth book, where you still talk about you developing, you know, you're, you're yes. learning, you're developing. And I remember, and I think I've told you this before, when we did an interview, look, it seems like years ago now, but I think it was 2000 and must be 2016, and uh, I was making some quite big decisions at the time about uh, work and spiritual balance Mm -hmm. and you were going to send me a copy of the book that talks about our uh, communication with animals and you did send me a book and on the one day that I had to make a decision about my spirituality and how much I practiced um, overtly as as a medium the book arrived and it wasn't the book you said you would send at all it was the book that um, I think it was the book earlier that talks about how we develop and learn to use our gift. And I thought that's that was so pivotal, how th- little things happen at the right time that give you a message. And, you know, what, probably very unconsciously, the, the wrong book was sent. Um, but absolutely, in spiritual terms, it was a purposeful sending because it answered a question that I had. Um, and so, you know, you've learned, you've developed as, you, as you've gone, you've honed your skills as a medium and continue to develop, we all do. How is the communication now between um, Ed and Tom? How, how, how good has Tom got in hearing uh, the messages? Um, Tom is still, well, I think he's, he's too close to it. So mm. he... Um, he usually relies on me to pass things along to him. So I think that, sometimes, sometimes that's my we were... thinking really, because you know, when I got the book through the door mm-hmm. and it wasn't the book I was expecting, the the answer was so clear. It was mad, but I was too close to to the question to be able to answer the question on my own, and you inadvertently answered the question for me. And um, and so that's I, that's why I asked really because if you're too close to something, it's really hard to understand the nuances that, and the communication in the way that spirit give it to us. Does that absolutely. make sense? It absolutely does. Yes. So I owe you a book. Yeah, well, that's, that's not that's not why I was saying. That, no, no. I I am I, um, I, I have that book on my on my bookshelf, and you sent me some bookmarks and cards as well. Oh, okay. And they, they are there because um, they were incredibly important on that day. Incredibly, you, you know, you wouldn't believe. Um, it stopped me making an incredibly big mistake. And, uh, yeah, yeah, just purely because of the nature of, of 
it was describing about our gift and, and the learning and how we how we see things and it suddenly brought me straight back to basics and uh, and and told me just to be who I am and uh, not to not to put too much trust all the time in other people and to learn to be myself and make my own decisions so it was very important to me actually so who do you think from spirit nudged me to send you that book instead oh you see now that's an killer question isn't it um i i would probably i would probably say my guide actually because um because i i was really torn between two life cho- choices and i absolutely knew because i was getting every sense that he could give me to say don't even think about it and um, but there was just that little bit of something else if you imagine that you know they're kind of a, a good and bad person on each shoulder and one was saying you know think this through this is daft what are you thinking and the other one was going yeah but it'd be really good fun and you could do this this and this and it'd be really <laughs> spectacular um and then the final thing was the day of the decision the postman came and i opened the book and uh, i opened yeah and part of the book was there and i was like right okay i get it fine enough enough already stop moaning i've got it i've got the hang of this <laughs> that, that is fantastic yeah. i had I actually had a, uh, a um an occurrence similar to that i went and did an appearance uh, as a fundraiser for an animal rescue up in new jersey mm-hmm. a couple of months ago and as i was packing my books i had um had a couple of uh paranormal books that i was going to give away to certain people in the audience if i was moved to give them away and, yeah. and and they've been sitting in my closet for about two years and I've never taken them um, but as I was packing my books there was a, a, a young person who kept nudging me and said you need to take this book it's called My Son in the Afterlife and you need to bring this to the event and there's someone there's someone there that needs to get it who lost their child And I thought, okay, I'll put it in the suitcase and I'll figure it out. Well, at the end of the uh, at the end of my talk there, uh, it was uh, doing pets in the afterlife. um, I I announced that a young spirit came to me and and nudged me to bring this book. And there was a man in the audience um, who raised his hand. I said, "There's only one person here that lost a child, and this book is for you." And I said, can you raise your hand? And, you know, I, of course, I'm thinking there's probably like six people that maybe <laughs> may have lost a child. Yes, yes. This, there was only one person, and it was a man, and he lost, uh, his, he lost his little girl. And um, he raised his hand, and it, it choked me up, as it's mm-hmm. doing right now. Um, mm-hmm. And it choked him up, too. And he, he came over afterward, and he got the book for me, and he gave me a hug. And he said, I was really hoping to hear from my daughter tonight. So it's amazing how spirit moves us to do things, like even with something like a book. So there was an an instance right there. That's amazing. I I just think the way that um, it's just just marvelous the way we are so influenced. And if you're not attuned to it, you'd have no idea uh, just the influences that are around you. Absolutely. So in terms of your relationship with with Ed mm-hmm. and the level of communication you now have with him, um, so he, he's, he's validated he's there, uh, he's reassured his family, he's answered the, the, uh, the big question mark about his passing. Is he still very close to you guys? Is he, is he, is, has he still got more to give to you? Oh, absolutely. Um, every time we go on vacation, he's there. <laughs> um, we just we just took a, a, a cruise on the Danube River. Uh, I'd never been there uh, before, and 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 there were signs from him. Um, my mother does the same thing. My mother is a big communicator, and we were uh, so my mother actually gave us a big sign, a literal sign. Um, we were driving. We were taking a bus from. Um, from Austria to Passau, Germany, and we were driving by uh, through the countryside. It was about 30 miles, and it was a huge sign, and the sign said Norma on it. That's all it said. That's my mother's name, and I have no idea what it belonged to, 
but I knew that my mother was around. And then there's a sign, and and my husband goes, "Why is there a sign with your mother's name in the middle of Germany?" <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't know, <laughs> but I do know. So my mother was there. So Ed and my mom both went on vacation with us. Nothing like intrusion, is there? <laughs> Well, you know, the more the merrier. <laughs> what's, what's the worst thing about having that relationship? Because uh, there's, not, there's not every, most things come with a small cost, don't they? So what's what's the worst thing? Oh, there's nothing. There's nothing bad about it for me, but for Tom, he doesn't like it when I find out about things that um, he doesn't want me to know. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "So I'll I'll tell him something," and he said, "I know how you know that." Why is he telling you that? Yeah. I said, because it's something that I need to know. It, it pertains to some life situation that's going to happen to us in the next day or two. And so, uh, you know, I can't tell you how many times he says, you know, I really don't like it when you two gang up on me. <laughs> is, is there ever a time when what Ed says would um, be intrusive in your own relationship? No, no, so no. On a personal level. Yeah, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I, quite frankly, Ed has helped me figure out the reason for some of Tom's behaviors. So, because <laughs> okay. I'll go, why is he behaving that way? And and then Ed will give me some insight into that. And I thought, you know what, this is this is better than like hiring a therapist. But nothing in terms of intimacy or um, conversations that could be intrusive or harmful to either of you. No, no, not at all. Um, He's uh, he's really supportive. Um, in fact, when we were together the very first year, we decided that we were going to go see a psychic. Now, um, I, and by the way, I I make I recently made a distinction to people between psychic and medium, yeah. um, because somebody told me somebody asked me if I can tell them their future and their lottery tickets and all that stuff. And I said, no, you know, I just talk to dead people and dead pets. Psychics have the ability to tune into energy of past, present, and future. I am not a psychic medium. I am just a medium Mm -hmm. or medium rare, if you will. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So we went to see a psychic um, here in Maryland. And the psychic split us split us up he did, they didn't know that we were actually together but um uh, one psych so one psychic sat with tom and she said there's a man here that's your contemporary somebody that was very close to you that i think it was a partner to you so that was ed um and she said this man this young man is telling me that the the, the guy you walked in with is your soulmate he's going to be your soulmate for the rest of your life. Um, and, and Tom walked out of there, and, and the, the psychic that I sat with said the same thing. She said, do you feel a young man next to you? And I said, yeah, his name is Ed. And she said, Ed tells me that Tom is going to be your soulmate, and he brought you two together. So, of course, at that time, Tom was like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he came around. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will tell you that um, that Ed has done Ed has come through a number of times. Um, he um, he has given me a lot of warnings, um, saved me from things. And and right there in the UK, when we were when one of the chapters here, chapter fourteen, is about the amazing rescue in England that Ed sent somebody when we were totally lost in England in 2013. Um, uh-huh. And in, keep in mind, in 2013, uh, phones did not have the GPS app. <laughs> mm, yeah. We had a GPS unit that went haywire, and we got lost. Um, and Ed actually also answered one of my longtime requests in 2013, and that was to finally meet him or kind of meet him in person because he sent, he sent to rescue us in the middle of nowhere, a heavily forested area, with just a few houses every like five miles or so. Don't ask me how the GPS got us there. I, well, it's in the story, but um, you know we were blindly following te- following technology, and we realized we shouldn't have. But he, long story short, this Royal Mail truck happened to come over the hillside in the middle of nowhere, 
five minutes after we had stopped the car and got started to get really nervous. And out of the mail truck came this man that looked exactly as Ed would have looked had he lived to be in his mid-50s. Salt and pepper hair, same build, same facial structure, same looked just like him. And it was so freaky. Um, and he said, the gentleman said, Sure, I'll, you know, just follow me. I'm almost done. I have like four houses left to deliver here. He said, I, how did you get stuck here? And I thought, this is a long story. He said, well, don't worry. I'll take care of you. And he led us right out to the highway. But when I get back in the car, um, Tom looked at me and he, and he said, that man looks just like Ed would have looked had he lived. Wow. Hmm. So I got my, I got my wish, Ed. I got to meet Ed in person, in a manner of speaking. In a royal mail truck. In a royal mail truck. (laughs) When in doubt, use the mailman. Um, (laughs) Well, Julie, it was a special delivery. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) not even. Nice. Yeah, Yeah, I should have called you FedEx. So, uh, now, Rob, this book, do you you have a website, or is it just uh, buy buy the book online or in the stores? Um, What's the deal? Um, I do have a website, you, it, but it's only available on Amazon.com or Amazon UK um, or Amazon anywhere around the world. So my website is robguttrow.com, R-O-B-G-U-T-R-O.com, or um, Pet Spirits also will take you to my website. Wow, you're a man of the world. Two websites. Well, you know. <laughs> And some of, by the way, some of the chapters in here, too, um, are about how Ed confirmed that two of my dogs who have passed are with him. He actually gave me confirmation of both of them being with him. So that was really comforting to me that now, you know, my, two of my canine children are, are being taken care of by their Uncle Ed in spirit. One of the one of the the, uh, the takeaways here from <clears throat> from this story that I share with everybody is that there are several lessons, and this book really just isn't about Ed's story befriending me. You, when you read this story, you'll I use all of these instances to teach the reader many of the ways that spirit communicate from the other side. Um, so there are. There really are seven lessons that I put in the last chapter about how spirits communicate and, and that they really are they really are with us so that um, you'll get something more out of this book than just a, an interesting story about you know a spirit meeting me but you'll learn how spirits of your loved ones uh, take care of you, interact with you and they show you show up every now and then. Um, now we will have your book posted on our website as well, so anybody listening can just do one click and pick up the book. Again, our guest has been Rob Gatro, and the book is Kindred Spirits, How Our Spirit Befriended a Medium. Thank you for being here. Thank you both very much. It's been such a pleasure uh, being your, your guest again, and I look forward to the next time. Oh, thanks, Rob. You've been listening to the House of Mystery radio show. To find out more about our guests, hosts, or shows, go to www.houseofmystery.com. The mission has been completed. The end! By George, he's got it! It is the end! I'll see you. If you're lying to me, I'll be back. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. 